in this scene of madness and chaos and there being a voice of reason in the middle of it all reminding us all of what we already know that we have a right not to be beaten the crap out of was just thank you so much for being that person. I'm kind of here with two different hats on today. I'm, uh, I'm one of the conveners of Community Action Against Homophobia, we organise the marriage equality marches. But I'm also here standing in for my best friend, because another person who was brutalised on Saturday night is Bryn Hutchinson, and he really wanted to be here today, but you know, having your skull cracked against the pavement messes with your head, and he's been up and down ever since then, and he's not here. Um, but he did ask me to stand up and say a little bit about his story as well. And I understand I saw his parents here before as well. And if you're still around, then you should come forward and stand at least on the grass. You don't need to necessarily speak, but come and stand on the grass so we can see who you are. I was on my way home from what I thought had been a really successful Mardi Gras because I was in the in the area with people who were marching and I saw all the all the good side of the parade and I was walking home and I get a phone call from Bryn and Bryn is sobbing and saying I've just been arrested and I've had the crap beaten out of me and I don't know what was going on I said do you need me to come and find you and get you and he said my partner has already picked me up I saw him a day later and he was covered in bruises he had a graze right down the side of his head there were still grooves in his his wrist from the shackles and the doctor had told him the reason he couldn't feel his thumb anymore was because there was temporary nerve damage they hope it's temporary with nerves the only way you can tell is to wait and see so that's pretty unacceptable and I said what happened what led to that happening at the end of the parade when they took down the barricades he decided to cross the road and the police officer said to him, please don't cross the road. And he said, I'm already halfway across. Can I just finish crossing the road? And that was it. They started laying into him. And my, my friend is 159 centimeters tall. He's tiny. Many of you would probably remember him because last year he was a convener of Community Action Against Homophobia. And he stood here and he led the rallies that many of you have come to. This little guy is an academic and a gardener. And he's never been violent to another human being in his life. And five officers laid into him, while another ten held back the crowd who were calling out for the police to stop. But this is not about a single case of police violence. This is about the fact that from 1978, the violence finally erupted. Peaceful rally today. Thank you very much for your contribution. Then. <laughs> There's a lot more going on than just one case of brutality because we can feel it. We came out here tonight and we know there is an undercurrent of outrage happening here because we are a people who know what it's like to be brutalized and we're a people who know what it's like to fight for our liberation and stand up for ourselves. And that night there were strip searches public humiliation, people being strip searched in front of their friends and in front of strangers. There were 96 drug related arrests, which I don't think have done all that much to help the situation with drugs in the world. And police were making demeaning comments to women being told to cover themselves up. Where did they think they were going on the night of Mardi Gras? This kind of violence does not happen on New Year's Eve. It doesn't happen at Chinese New Year. It doesn't happen on Australia Day or Anzac Day. They pick on the gay and lesbian community and the transgender community and bisexual community because they think we're a soft target. But we're kind of proving them wrong right now because we're not a soft target. I am so proud of a community that can see something like that go viral on Wednesday and by Friday have mobilized this many people to stand up for their liberation and their freedom. We are an exceptionally proud people and we will not be brutalized by the police. We will not stand up for it. A 
want to introduce one last speaker before we start to organize to march off, and that is Irene Doughton. Irene is an incredibly powerful activist. She is a councillor in the city of Sydney. Um, she's from the Greens. She was there in 1978 when a lot of this first erupted, and here she is. Thanks, Carl. I'd like to acknowledge that we're meeting on Aboriginal land, on Gadigal land, land that was never ceded, sold, or given away. And I pay my respects and our respects to the elders past and present. Aboriginal land always was and always will be. I would like to thank Carl action against homophobia for organising this rally tonight at such short notice and so successfully. And I would extend my sympathy to ex-car and co-convener Bryn Hutchinson who was brutally arrested after trying to cross the road um, against the orders of the police um, when the barriers were removed and people were already heading home. How deeply disappointing it must have been for Mr Hutchinson and the local police who have worked so hard together over the years to ensure that LGBTIQ events are safe and well managed. How sad for all those members of the community who thought that things were changing and the police were our friends. How sad they had to see a respected member of the gay community knocked over and beaten for no good reason by those who we were finally starting to trust. It is time that the New South Wales Police Force learned that they must keep their hands and their boots to themselves. <laughs> Again. We want to see the area celebrate its long and proud gay history and with the rainbow crossing and with the, the call for a Mardi Gras museum in the area it is starting to feel like a true rainbow precinct is possible in Sydney. This sort of incident is the last thing we need in that progress. It was only a few years ago that a young passerby was mercifully, no, mercis, mercis, yeah, he was tasered down in Oxford Street. Why? Because he was on the road and he didn't get off quick enough for the police's liking. That was totally uncalled for and unacceptable. And although it happened in the city, who can forget the terrible death of Brazilian student Roberto Curti? in Redfern. I have another friend who's here tonight who recently saw an Aboriginal man being pushed at the escalators at King's Cross Station 
And his crime was that he didn't rush down to get a train as quickly as the police wanted him to. She, she was sad because she didn't have a camera to record it so that people would know what's happening. But ultimately, that's the lesson. We all have cameras in our phones and there's this sort of stuff can't be hidden anymore. The world, the world is watching. And if police want to bash people in public, they will be seen. And it will be called to answer for their behaviour. of intimidation in the gay community over the years. Any actions that members of our community are highly questionable and very scary. And I don't care where the police came from on Saturday night. They should have been more in control of their feet and their hands. <laughs> has hit a note with the community and it was through the vigilance of fellow party goers and their iPhones that this incident of police heavy handedness was exposed to the world. We have come a long way from the days of the first parade in 78 but it is imperative that things do not go backwards and that the great progress we have made toward total acceptance by the community is not lost by incidents like those on the weekend. It is time the police force stopped investigating polite complaints against themselves. During the past few years, there are so many cases of police brutality and there have been no charges. None. As David Shoebridge said in New Matilda, there is an inherent conflict of interests whenever we have police investigating themselves. This cannot be resolved until New South Wales has a single independent police review body which is sufficiently resourced and has its own officers to undertake all critical incident reviews. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, finally, I would like to highlight the theme of this year's Mardi Gras. Three generations of love. That's what this community is all about. It's about love and peace and being free to express ourselves for who we are. That is the spirit of Mardi Gras, and it must not be spoiled by a few cowboys in big boots and blue uniforms. So finally, the LBGTIQ community is here to stay, and tonight we stand united in saying no to violence, no to discrimination, and a big yes to our right to be ourselves and to be treated justly and to be treated with the respect that we deserve. Thank